brought a pretty catchy title for her presentation called The Lazy Person's Guide to Save the World. And I'm sure uh, I'm one of the targeted audience, so I hardly can wait. What should I do to save the world? So welcome on the stage, the owner of this guide, the Deputy Secretary of State for Youth, Zsófia Ratz. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. It's great to have you here. Unfortunately, Naomi couldn't be here in person, but I have the privilege to uh, react on the video and on the messages that, that she uh, sent, and then to give you and provide you with some few tips and really a guide how you can save the world, or uh, it's a question if you want to save the world, actually. So let's see. What I'm going to talk about today is the levels of responsibility that we have when it comes to sustainable development. It's very easy to think that we are too tiny, that we're not enough to achieve real change, but I would like to change your mindset on that and convince you that you as an individual can do a lot on a personal level, on a local level, on a national level, and on a global level as well. Naomi talked a lot about this whole panic that surrounds sustainable development. And it's, very, it's, it's, a, very, it's a trap to, to think that you need to panic and to have this climate anxiety. Because you, if you panic, that's an empty action. You don't do anything. You, you, just, you just sit there in panic and that will not change anything. So I would like to convince you that instead of panicking and being afraid, you can take your own uh, actions on your personal level and achieve real change. A little bit story time in the beginning because Naomi said that politicians should not talk about sustainable development because they are not scientists. I'm not a scientist either, but let me tell you where and when uh, I became familiar with this whole sustainable development concept. From 2017 to 2018, I was Hungary's youth delegate to the United Nations. This means that I was like a mini diplomat. I was working in the UN, I was giving speeches in the UN, or organizing side events, and that was when I started learning about what it really means to leave, uh, lead a sustainable uh, life. But I always felt that just talking about it will never be enough. We really have to take actions. But I felt that as a person, I was too small, too little to achieve an impact. The Lazy Person's Guide to Saving the World would like to give you an image of, of what you can do on, on different levels and how you can really change your environment and inspire your family and your friends to change the environment as well. First of all, let's see. The first level of responsibility is where you can be the sofa superstar. This actually means that there are lots of things that you can do from the comfort of your own sofa. Let's see what are these things. Save electricity. This may seem very easy, but you have no idea how big of an impact this can have on your surroundings. If you stop using your computer, just unplug it uh, from the electricity, that will save you a lot. Uh, also, you can pay your bills online or via mobile. Uh, this is uh, intended to save the paper consumption. We, on an individual level, consume a lot amount of paper. If you do this online, you can save a lot. When it comes to social media, you shouldn't just like the posts that you agree with. You should spread the message and really share it so that everyone can see. If you find a post that is about sustainable development or how you can lead a more uh, climate conscious life, then you should share it with your friends and your family and, do, and have a social uh, impact within the social media platforms. Speak up. This might seem very easy, again, but it's really important that the things that you believe in and the things that you are working for should be something that you are proud of and that you share it with your friends and your family. Turn off the lights. I mean, again, so simple, but can have such a big impact. I don't know about you, but I always notice when I'm in my, um, in my flat, I always leave all the lights on because it's just so comforting to, to have. But if you're not uh, staying in your room or in the bathroom or in the kitchen, really just turning off the lights can save you a lot. 
stay informed. This is something that's very important to have up-to-date information about the topics that you're interested in, about sustainable development, to gather the knowledge so that you don't just speak about it, but you can back it up with actual facts. The second level is the household hero. This is where I believe we can do a lot uh, in our own environment. First of all, for example, by uh, air drying uh, your hair, your clothes, this is something that will save you a lot on electricity. The second point is the most painful for me because I love taking long showers, but you have no idea that with a five to 10 minute shower, you can save a lot of water than would uh, go into consumption. Eating less meat, this is again for me very hard because I love it. I'm not saying that you should completely cut meat out of your life. I'm just saying that maybe you should have it once or twice a week so you don't consume that much of meat. Composting, this is something that I just started doing recently. It might seem disgusting, but believe me that if you do it in the freezer, you start food scraps collecting it in the freezer, it will not smell and you can take it to your local farmer's market so that it will go to the compost and you don't just throw it to the garbage. Recycling paper, plastic, glass, aluminium, I'm sure that you have heard about this. It's very important to uh, collect these uh, trash selectively. Uh, as for me, I still have debates about this with my father. This is something that I think will go on for years and years to come. I always select uh, the rubbish, and what he does is just he pours it back to the garbage, and then I take it out. So this is something that, that we just do because I, I still couldn't convince him that this is very important. He's not here, unfortunately, but I will convince him that this is very important and really just you know, selectively gathering the rubbish and not just pouring everything to, to the trash can. It can really uh, help and save a lot. Uh, when it comes to packaging, I don't know how many of you have been to the States, to the United States, but I have seen crazy examples of people packaging everything. Individual apples were packaged into plastic. It's crazy. It's so much plastic is going to waste. You should really find those shops. We have a lot of these in Hungary, in Budapest, where they don't package everything. You just go there, you bring your own uh, glass jar, for example, and they pour the honey, the sugar, and everything that you need into it so you can save on the packaging. There are lots of things. Uh, I really don't want to get into the details. Um, you know, we have very, very, very easy things like get a rug. I mean, that, that's something that, that everyone can do, and it really saves you a lot when it comes to the question of heating. Um, also, when it comes to taking care of a baby, that's something where you can gather a lot of garbage, especially with the diapers. Uh, so if you can maybe uh, use a, a cloth or something, there are lots of alternative options for diapers if you don't want to spend that much. The third level is the neighborhood nice guy. So we have discussed what you can do on a personal level and on your household level, but let's see what you can do on a local level. Shop local. This is something that has been a trend recently to shop local, but this is not something that we should just use as a hashtag because it's trendy, but we should really do this. I love going to the farmer's market and talking with the people who are actually producing uh, the vegetables and fruits that you're buying. They can tell you where, where it came from, how they treated it. It's very uh, useful and not just shopping local, but shopping smart. With this whole COVID situation, we started ordering everything online uh, from the comfort of our home, and we don't think about the, the damage of the shipping and what it really takes to get it to your home. So you should really uh, buy online only the things that you think are the most uh, necessary for you. Um, using a refillable water bottle and coffee cup, this is something that is very easy. It's very um, comforting to just go to the coffee shop and take your, copy, uh, take your coffee in a paper cup, but uh, the amount of paper cups that we are using is crazy and it could easily be switched to uh, the refillable bottle that you're taking with yourself. Donating what you don't use, I think this is something that we should do much more frequently. We produce a lot of used clothes and used items, kitchen appliances, that, and we just throw them away. We should uh, make better use of it by donating it to someone who is in need and who can really use it. The fourth level is the exceptional employee. This is a gathering of the things that you can 
do when you are at your workplace. Uh, you should always remember that when it comes to sustainability, it's not just about uh, environmental sustainability. Sustainable development is about economical and social responsibility as well. When it comes to your workplace, uh, you can also have a socially sustainable workplace. For example, by uh, if you're a senior or if you're in a leading position, you can always mentor younger people. You can tell them about why it's important for you to live a sustainable life and to inspire them to, for, so that they can live a sustainable life as well. You can make sure that your company uses energy efficient heating. This is something that a lot of uh, workplaces do not put a big emphasis on, but it's very important. Also, you know, just uh, ins uh, inspecting if your company invests in clean infrastructure. When it comes to big companies, they can produce a lot of um, CO2 emissions, so it's very important for you to check if your company and if your workplace does everything in order to be more sustainable. My personal favorite is organizing a no-impact week at work. This is something where you can inspire your coworkers so for one week. You should not produce any waste. You will see that it's very uh, easy if you implement it on a daily basis not to produce any waste. All you have to do is prepare and, uh, and try to, to focus on not producing any waste. You should always uh, see if you can recycle at your workplace paper, selective uh, rubbish bins. This is something that is very easy, very simple, but can make a huge difference. And as I'm getting to the closing of my presentation, I really hope that I could just, this, is, this was not everything that you can do, of course, this is just a small gathering of the little steps that you can do, but I think it's very important for us to understand that we, on a personal level, can achieve actual change uh, if we recognize that we don't have to do everything globally. Not everyone can work at the UN, not everyone should work at the UN. You can uh, deal with uh, sustainable development uh, as an individual, as someone in your workplace, or inspire others in your local community to lead a more sustainable life. And uh, as Naomi said, it's very important to do your research and stay informed about the ways you can live a more sustainable life. So this is why I picked this picture, because out of all the 17 uh, sustainable development goals, I think quality education is very important, so you have all the knowledge uh, to actually lead a sustainable uh, life. I I really hope that I could uh, get your attention and motivate you to, to use all these tips uh, during your days and uh, I am happy to answer the questions if you have. Thank you.